Sean Collins here, application engineer for 3M. Today's video, we're gonna discuss plastic repair. In particular, a two-sided plastic repair with damage that goes all the way through the bumper, such as a crack. Before we get started though, I'd like to remind you we always need to wear the proper PPE. So for this video, I'll be using a respirator, some gloves, and some safety glasses. Also keep in mind that this video is intended for a professional setting such as a collision repair shop. I put a link to all our safety and warranty information below. With that said, let's get started. So before we get started with the repair, I just want to address some of the materials that we'll be using. So, as you can see here, we're only gonna really be using three materials, so, uh, two adhesives and an adhesion promoter. So we're trying to keep this repair simple. And just with three products, it's very, very simple. So we do have the 4240 backside repair material. So that's for reinforcing the backside of this two-sided repair. Then we have the 5887 for the cosmetic repair side, which sands much easier than what the backside would do. So that's why we have these two products one for strength on the back, one that's really good for sandability on the front, and then we've got our adhesion promoter as well. So this is typically all you'd really need for this type of a repair. However, if you're in an extremely hot climate, let's say you're in Texas or Arizona where it's very hot, you can get a little more work time for the backside repair material. This has about a minute of work time at normal temperatures, such as 70 degrees, but if you get into the really hot temperatures, it cuts that work time down. So if you need more time, you can use this 8237. So there is an option for a longer work time, which is three minutes with this particular product. But that's really it, very simple system. Uh, before we get going, I'm gonna clean this bumper up and then we'll get started with the adhesives as well. Okay, I've got this bumper repair area cleaned up. Now, you always need to clean with soap and water first. So that's something that I did over in a separate wash bay. And it's a good idea to wash the entire part, not just the small area that you're working on. If you only clean small areas, then you could drag contaminants into that clean area. And if you clean the entire bumper, you may also identify some other damage you may not have seen while it was dirty. So a real good cleaning job is, is really important. We want to make sure everything's cleaned up so we have no contaminants. Okay, the first thing we need to do when we have this type of damage is stabilize the front side of the repair area. Now this one isn't super large, um, but if you get larger cracks, you can get a situation where the two sides of the crack may not be lined up properly. So the first thing we want to do is use an aluminum tape and get that front side really secure so that that does not move at all. If that actually shifts on us a little bit, it's gonna make the rest of the repair much more difficult. So I just like to push down really good with the backside of a spreader, make sure that I've got that on there nice and tight, and then we can flip this over and start preparing the backside for the repair. Okay, so now everything's cleaned up, and you'll notice I spent a little extra time cleaning the back side of the bumper. That's very important because sometimes the manufacturer will put a mold release agent on there to get it out of the mold where it's made. So they don't necessarily clean that off before they deliver the car, so we really want to make sure that back side is really clean. Now that it is, what I'm going to do is repair this back side uh, of this bumper for some adhesive repair material. So all we really need to do is abrade it. We're just gonna sand it with some grade 80 uh, and rough that surface up to give it a little tooth. Okay, now you can see the back side has been thoroughly sanded with 80 grit. You'll notice that I did not taper or V-groove out the backside. That's not necessary for this repair. All I really need to do is get it abraded 
and give it some tooth for that adhesive and that reinforcing material to bond with that plastic. So the next thing we need to do is spray some adhesion promoter on that repair area. So this adhesion promoter is chemically designed to enhance the adhesion of that plastic repair material. So I've sprayed that adhesion promoter on the bumper. What we really want to apply is what I call a medium wet coat. We don't want puddles, we don't want it soaked, um, but that medium coat where it's coated but not overcoated. Uh, now we need to let that sit and flash off and dry for about 10 minutes. All right, you can see now that I've got that reinforcing material on the back side. A couple things that you probably noticed. First of all, I equalized my cartridge. So I, I made sure first that I have material coming out of both sides by pumping some material out into a paper towel. And then before I actually used it, I put down a couple inches of a bead here just to make sure that it's thoroughly mixed. The other thing here is that I first put down a tight coat, so one thin coat of that material, then I put my reinforcing cloth into that bed of wet material and then buried it with another application of that adhesive. Very important that we do that. We don't want to stick this directly to the bumper because we lose all that surface area underneath this cloth. So now we've got that reinforcing material buried in there nicely. All we need to do now is wait for that to cure before we can start working on the front side. Okay, so we've waited long enough for this backside material to cure. I just want to point out that on these cartridges, it will give you these key times on these time dots. So here it says it's a 50 second work time, a 15 minute sand time, and a one hour paint time. So always check those before you get started to know how much time you have to work with these products. Now we're ready to flip this over and start repairing the front side. So now we've got this bumper flipped over here. And remember we previously taped this up to keep it stable while that backside adhesive cures. Now I can remove this aluminum tape and you can see it's nicely aligned. Uh, now we can begin to sand this and taper this area out. So what I'm going to do is use a file belt sander and I'm using a coarse Scotch-Brite belt. You could use a sandpaper belt, but an abrasive belt like that tends to gouge a little more um, and load up a little more as well because this plastic tends to smear a little bit. So this coarse grade Scotch-Brite belt works really nice for tapering this area out. Now, the point of tapering here is that I want to trench this out, V-groove, U-groove, whatever people call it, but taper it a little bit wider and so that it's a gradual taper without any sharp edges around the top. These materials and the bumper expand and contract with temperature changes over time. And if you have any sharp edges, it could what we call ghost or map and show right around that circle where that material comes in contact with the plastic. So uh, I want to have that nice and rounded with gradual edges using this tool. So I'll start sanding this now. Okay, now you can see that this is tapered out and it's a nice gradual dishing. Um, what I'm really trying to accomplish there is to dish out deep enough where the crack is almost completely gone. And typically you go down where you can see a little bit of that repair material in that crack. Now you know you've gone deep enough. If you don't go deep enough, you've got a blunt end of that plastic connecting. And we want that to be a nice thin knife edge right down in the center there. You'll also notice that when you do that, it does smear the plastic a little bit. So we need to sand what we call the swarf off of there. So that plastic that's loose 
And we need to do that anyways because now we need to go with an 80 grit to really rough that up and make it kind of fuzzy to give that adhesive some tooth to grab onto. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use a DA to sand this out with some 80 grit. So I've sanded this with my 80 grit. I did want to stop before I was finished though. You can see here, there's one small area where the plastic is still shiny. When it's shiny, that means it's very smooth and slick and the repair materials don't like to stick to that type of surface. So I'm gonna continue on here and make sure that I take care of that so it's all this dull, fuzzy looking uh, material in this area. After that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go with a wider circle around here with some 80 grit. So I want the fuzzy material that's rough inside this tapered area, but on the outside of the tapered area where my repair material is gonna be feathered, I want that to be a 180 grit scratch that's, again, much more likely, less likely to show through uh, as a scratch later on. Okay, the next step in the process to, is to apply our adhesion promoter. So this adhesion promoter is chemically designed to grab onto that plastic. These are typically a low surface energy plastic where nothing really wants to stick to it well. So we need to enhance that adhesion with this material. So I spray this on. I wanna spray on what I call a medium wet coat. We don't wanna over soak it and we don't wanna just dust it. So somewhere in between that, um, I'll apply this and then we'll have to let it flash off for about 10 minutes. So a few things I want you to notice while I do this is, first of all, I'm going to equalize my cartridge for the adhesive. So I'm going to extrude a little bit of material before I put the tip on into a paper towel, then I'm going to extrude a little bit of material on a board just to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. The other thing is I wanna make sure I look at my timestamp on here that I have five minutes of time to work with this before it starts to harden up. Um, that'll be a little shorter if it's a little hotter in your shop. And then I have 15 minutes before I can sand on that material. I can speed that up with a little bit of heat, gentle heat from a distance where it doesn't get too hot and it'll make uh, allow me to go just a little bit quicker doing that. The other thing I want you to notice is when I apply the adhesive, I'm gonna apply a small amount first and squish it in nice and tight. We call that a tight coat, so I'm really gonna spread it thin. Then I'll put more material on so that I can spread that and overfill it so that I can sand it down. The other thing is you're gonna notice when I put the material on the bumper, I'm not going to zigzag with it or go in a pattern. I'm just going to keep my nozzle submerged in the puddle of adhesive and allow that puddle to just grow. And keeping that in that puddle keeps air from getting in there where I'd end up with any pinholes. So that's kind of a small tip that's very important as well. So I'm ready to apply my adhesive now. Okay, now we've got that adhesive on there. One thing I did want to address, if you didn't notice, in order to get the material in there where it's not going to sink into that tapered area, you want to cup your spreader a little bit. So you just put a little bit of a bend in it like this when you do your last couple of swipes. That way you won't shave it too close where it's just going to sink down into that area. So you're adding a little bit of material by cupping and arching that spreader a little bit just to ensure that it's completely filled. Now we've just gotta wait for about 15 minutes for this to cure and we'll be ready to sand. Okay, so now our adhesive is cured and ready to sand. Couple things to notice. 
Number one, when I sanded this out earlier, I sanded a pretty large area and now you can see why, because that repair always gets a little bigger than you think it's gonna get. So, you know, give yourself plenty of room when you do sand those coatings off, because like I say, it does get larger when you start spreading things around. I'm gonna start with uh, 180 grit, but if you had a large area or it was really tall um, and more material on there, you could start with 80, but you just wanna be careful that you don't sand anywhere else with that 80 grit, just on that repair material. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to re-feather those 80 grit scratches out, because remember, this is 180 out here where I'm gonna feather into. Also, when you do this, you wanna keep your sander moving. You don't wanna push down hard or just keep going in one spot at a high speed. You wanna sand at a fairly low speed, because if you overheat this material, especially out here where it's feathered and very thin, it could get too hot and kind of roll back. So keep your sander moving and run it at a fairly low speed. Okay, we're ready to sand. I'll get on my PPE and we'll take care of that. Okay, so now I've DA sanded this upper area uh, with the 180 grit. And as you can see, it looks nice and straight. I did a little final check blocking just to make sure I don't have any sharp edges or anything is not level. So it's nice and flat, looks real good. Uh, the last step now, we're going to uh, put some 320 on and just sand that outer area with some 320 grit. Okay, so I sanded this outer area with some 320. Um, you don't wanna spend a lot of time on the repair material with 320. You could see that I just kinda glazed over it very quickly, but I just wanna make sure there's no uh, deeper sand scratches than the 320 in this surrounding area here. So this would be really ready to go over the paint shop for primer. So the last thing really you want to do is inspect for any imperfections like pinholes or deep scratches or anything of that nature. I see I don't have any pinholes in here. However, if I did, I don't wanna use some other material like a glaze to fill any pinholes. I wanna use the same exact repair material that I used to make this repair to fill those pinholes in. So you're just gonna put a little bit on the corner of your spreader, just fill those pinholes in, but use the same material. If you use something else, there could be a compatibility issue where it could bubble out later and you don't wanna ruin your nice repair at this point. Thanks a lot for joining me. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. For more content like this, you can look us up at 3M Collision Repair Academy, and I left a link below for that. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you next time.